Hey everybody, this is Brian McCormick here with Gallery Bride, and in today's video, I wanna talk with you guys about pricing your artwork. So, pricing your artwork can be, you know, difficult because there's so many different ways to do it, there's so many different things to consider. So what I'm gonna talk about are things like considering your audience, considering where you are in your art career, and then different formulas that you can use to price your work. So if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll be talking about a formula that not a lot of people know about, but it can definitely give you some different options when it comes to pricing your artwork. So one of the first things that you need to consider is who is your audience? So if you're gonna be selling online directly, it's gonna be far different pricing than if you're say selling in a gallery. So you definitely want to take a look at where you're gonna be selling your artwork. If you're gonna be selling directly, then your prices are gonna probably be a little bit lower than maybe a similar artist that's selling in a gallery. Galleries typically take about a 50% cut or commission from whatever your pricing is. So if your artwork is, if you're gonna sell it direct for $100 in a gallery, it might be $200. And now I think some galleries are even taking a 60% cut. So it's gonna be very, very different depending on the audience that you have. You know, maybe you're selling at local craft fairs, art shows, that sort of thing. So you're gonna to wanna to determine where you're gonna be selling. If you're gonna be selling in multiple areas, then you're gonna to wanna to definitely consider a lot of different things. You know, does the gallery allow you to sell direct? Um, what kind of paintings would you be able to sell if the gallery does allow you to sell direct? So there's a lot of things to consider there, but um, we can always get into that into another video. So definitely you wanna consider your audience. Once you've figured that out, then you're gonna to wanna to do a little bit of research. So we'll just stick with selling directly online because that's how I got started and I feel like that's how a lot of people get started. So we're not gonna really go down the gallery route. So when you're selling directly and you're selling online, one of the things you wanna do is you wanna take a look at your competition. You wanna see what they are selling their artwork for. But how do you do that? Well, it depends on a number of different things. You want to take a look at someone that is working in a similar medium. So oil painting versus acrylics versus, well, oil painting and acrylics are gonna be pretty similar, but you know, pricing is gonna be different from oil painting and acrylic to say, you know, water-based mediums like gouache and watercolor. So you're gonna take into consideration the type of medium that you're painting in and you're also gonna to wanna to consider the size. That's a big thing. You definitely wanna, so if you're selling a five by seven, you wanna compare it to another five by seven to make sure that it's of a similar price. And you also wanna consider you know, materials. Um, is it a work on paper? Is it a work on canvas? Is it a work on panel? That's all gonna probably be factored into the pricing as well. So these are all definitely things you wanna do. So let's take an example. So when I was originally pricing my artwork, I would take a look at a five by seven on hardboard panel, oil painting, and it was a landscape. So you're definitely gonna to compare the landscape as well, because you don't wanna compare it to say, a portrait or a figure painting, because people often charge more for portraits and figure paintings just because it takes a little bit more time to, to get those exact, a little bit more time and attention and detail that goes into those. So artists will typically charge more for portraits and figures, even if it's a landscape with figures in it, they're gonna probably charge a little bit more just because the figures are in there. So you wanna take that into consideration as well. And then you wanna take into consideration, you know, how much detail is going into the work. You know, are you doing expressionist work with very loose and fast brush strokes that you can get out very quickly? Is it more impressionist? Is it more hyper-realistic, which is gonna take way, way more time? Um, so you definitely wanna consider how much detail is going into the artwork as well. So once you've figured out all of those things, you figured out, you know, your style, what you paint with, you know, more often than not, and you've gone out and let's just say you take a look at Etsy and you take a look and see what other people are pricing it for. Just take some numbers down and try and take an average of that. And you don't really want to be too far above or too far below that. If you're pricing it way, way too below, 
one of the things that people can do is take a look at that and it might make them wonder like, why is this so inexpensive? Is this a print? Is this a knockoff? Is this a forgery? Is it inferior somehow? Is it damaged? So if it's too far below the market price, you know, even if you're just trying to get sales, it might deter some people just because the price is so low. It's just a psychological effect. And if it's way too high, people are gonna notice that as well. They're gonna see, well, this five by seven is $500, but this one is, you know, $100 and they're both on Etsy and they both look pretty similar. So why the difference in price? They're gonna probably be going for the average price. So you definitely wanna be taking that into consideration when you're doing your pricing. Once you've figured all of this out, you can start pricing your artwork and it's really just a little bit of experimentation. So you have to put it out there in the market. If nobody's you know, buying it, maybe it's priced a little bit too high. The general rule of thumb is you probably wanna start pricing it on the lower side. You know, even if, you know, you've worked really hard on this, I know you want to definitely get your money out of it, but at the end of the day, you know, we're creating artwork and it's supposed to go out into the world. So unless, you know, you're starting out and this is your sole source of income, which I would definitely not recommend because even some of the best artists have multiple streams of income. They're teaching, they're doing workshops, they're doing a lot of different things. So you just have to be mindful of that. So anyway, the one thing you don't want to do is lower your prices. And this generally comes into play when you're in galleries, but generally you want to slowly over time increase your prices. You don't want to be decreasing your prices because if some people find out that they bought something from you and now you're selling at lower prices, they're probably going to not take too kindly to that. So when you're starting out, maybe err on the side of caution and price a little bit below the market but not so far below the market that it makes people start asking questions. And so then once you do that, you can start putting your artwork out there and you can then start kind of gauging, is there high demand? You know, maybe you can start raising your prices. After a while, you get a feel for like how fast your artwork is moving off the shelves. And then you can determine, do I need to take my prices up a little bit further? And a lot of artists recommend that you maybe do this once a year. And the way that you do this, and what I'm gonna talk about now, is some formulas for pricing your artwork. So, so far we've talked about figuring out who your audience is. Right now we're really looking at direct marketing to online shoppers on a platform, say like Etsy or something like that. And then you're gonna figure out similar sizes, similar styles, similar details, similar materials, get the average price, and then you go from there. But now how do you determine, let's say you've gotten your average price for like a five by seven, how do you scale that up? And how do you make it consistent? So this is the other thing that you wanna do. So you wanna make your prices consistent. If you have five by seven, you're gonna probably wanna be pricing that pretty similar each time. But then let's say you're doing like a 10 by 10. How do you figure out how to price that? Do you do research all over again? Not necessarily. What you can do is you can use a formula to figure out how to scale up your prices. Most artists will use a square inch pricing. So they'll take the canvas, they'll take, let's just say a 10 by 10, and they'll multiply that. So 10 times 10, that's 100. And let's just say for the sake of making this easy with the numbers, um, you're doing a dollar per square inch, which if you're just getting started, maybe not a bad place to start. Again, it all depends on your skill level. Um, it also depends on your name, your following. Um, if you have a bigger following, then maybe you can charge a little bit more because there's a little bit more demand for your work. But anyway, the square inch pricing works very well because you can scale it up pretty easily. You take a 10 by 10, and let's say you're doing it a dollar per square inch, that's gonna be $100. Pretty easy formula to work with. You scale all that down, if you're doing a dollar per square inch, five by seven, that's gonna be $35. Now that's your base price, just for the sake of figuring out the price of the painting. Now there's 
other things that you can put into that, and this is gonna be up to you, whether you factor this into your multiplier or not. Some people will do this and they'll just factor everything in and they'll just put a number on it and say, you know, this includes my materials, my time, my marketing, everything. It's all wrapped up into that multiplier number. Some people might have a base number and then add those things on. So they might add the cost of their materials. They might add the cost of the marketing. They might add the cost of the frame, shipping, all of that stuff. So that's up to you whether you wanna wrap that in and make it all inclusive or if you wanna add those things on top of your base price. Now, that's a pretty good method for keeping your prices consistent from smaller sizes to big sizes. Now, here's the one formula that not a lot of people know about. Now, this is the linear multiplier that you can do. So it's linear inch. So instead of doing, say, 10 by 10 and getting 100, you're gonna take 10 by 10 and add it together. So it's gonna be 10 plus 10, and then that's gonna be 20. Now you're gonna to wanna to figure out what your multiplier is gonna be. It's gonna be far different. So if you're selling it a dollar per square inch, when you're doing square inch, it's not gonna be the same if you're doing linear inch because the pricing is gonna be far different. There's gonna be a much wider range in your prices between your smaller work and your larger work. So this could be either a bad thing or a good thing depending on how you price your art. If you sell pretty high priced artwork, then what this could do is actually make your smaller artwork a little bit more affordable to people. So think about it. Let's take the, the 5x7 and the 10x10 example. If you're doing 10 by 10 and you're doing a dollar, then that there is gonna be a hundred dollars for, no, no, that's gonna be $20? Okay, so obviously my math is not that fantastic, but you guys can do the math and you can figure this out, but ultimately what you will find out is that there's gonna be a much wider range when you're using linear multipliers, linear inch pricing. So take that into consideration. It can definitely be a way to make smaller artwork a little bit more affordable for people. Um, but if you already sell at a lower rate, then that's gonna make your smaller artwork really inexpensive and that could be a bad thing. So figure out what works out well for you. There's lots of different things out there. These are just some ideas. I would definitely encourage you guys to do some more research, watch some more videos, read some books, and try and figure out what's gonna be the best option for you. And ultimately, that way you can make an informed decision, you can do your own research, you can do a little bit of experimenting and figure out what's gonna be the best way for you to price your artwork. So that's all I've got for this video. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If it was, please like, please subscribe, Comment. I'd love to hear back from you guys. I'd love to hear how you price your artwork. If you have any tips, suggestions, let me know because I'm always willing to learn some new things. But until then, that's all I have for this video. Hope you guys are doing well and we will see you in the next video.